Hi everyone, thanks for coming to our informational webinar today. Um, my name is Kimberly Tibbetts and I work for Global Links Learning Abroad on our degrees program team. Um, I'm very excited to introduce you to Scott McComb and Simon Callahan from Deakin University who will be presenting on uh, the Deakin University Medical School. Um, so thank you guys for joining us today and getting up a little extra early today. <laughs> Great. So. Yeah, so before we get started, I am going to um, quickly kind of go through who Global Links is, kind of um, what we do, and how we assess students like you through the process of applying to medical school. So we do offer degree programs in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. Um, we've essentially been working with students for over 25 years and sending them to study abroad. Um, so we have some top-ranked um, academic services, student support services uh, that we're here to provide you. We have been appointed uh, by universities just like Deakin University uh, to assist you not only through this initial step of applying but also preparing you for your time overseas. And the nice thing is, is that all of our services are free to both U.S. and Canadian students. So we do advise students applying for full degree programs at any of our 25 partner institutions. Uh, we're able to provide informational webinars like this one uh, featuring our university so that you can learn a little more about the program uh, or programs that you're interested in applying to. We're here to answer your questions. We're, in, we're located in both Toronto, Canada and also Denver, Colorado. Uh, so we're in your time zone. Um, we're available by phone, by email, and uh, we're here to answer your questions and connect you with the appropriate resources. We are able to certify academic transcripts. So for example, if you are planning on applying to a few different universities, we'll be able to um, certify just the one transcript copy that you send through, which saves you a lot of time and money. Um, we are able to obtain application fee waivers. There is no application fee waiver, or there is no application fee for Deakin University, so um, you don't have to worry about um, spending too much on your applications. And then we also provide an in-country orientation, which is called our Bridging Cultures Orientation Program. Um, this is available to students that do apply through Global Links Learning Abroad. Um, it provides you exciting excursions and activities and a chance to meet other students attending your program um, and the university or area that you're, you will be studying in. Um, the orientation sessions are great and they do help you adapt to your new home. Um, so with that said, um, I'm going to hand uh, the presentation over to Scott. He'll be able to tell you a little more about the Deakin University Medical School. Uh, we'll go through all of our questions at the end uh, through that question chat box. Uh, so make sure to think of all your questions as well. Um, and then we will also uh, follow up with you and make sure that you have the appropriate um, application so that you can apply to Deakin University. So let me uh, quickly bring up your guys' slides, and um, I will hand it over to you. All right. Thanks very much, Kimberly, and uh, welcome to everybody online. Or a good morning from Australia. It's currently 8 a.m., so we've had to shut the curtains behind us as the sun starts rising. Uh, what we've got here is a, a picture of our medical school. We're, we're a relatively new medical school. Uh, I'm one of the faculty members here, so I teach into public health medicine and infectious diseases, particularly in the first couple of years of the program. Uh, and next to me is our school executive officer, Simon Callahan, who will run you through some of the, the slides on our application process and will be able to answer any of your more technical questions. Uh, but I'm hoping to head over uh, pretty soon to see you guys in Canada um, in late May, early June, and it'll be great to, to catch up with some of you face to face. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. So basically we, we would like to talk about uh, the program in a few parts today. Uh, we'll talk, talk first of all about Deakin University, who I'm sure you probably haven't heard much about, uh, but we have been around for over 40 years. We'll then run through the medical program and, and how we go about teaching a postgraduate medical program, which is a little bit different uh, to a lot of other universities around. Simon and myself will talk briefly about the requirements that we have for Canadian recruits. We actually don't actively recruit in other areas at the moment. Um, we, we fill up our limited number of places with local international students 
uh, but you're actually at an advantage for being a Canadian. You get a, you get a chance to get in before the rest of the students. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the lifestyle of Vegas. I spent three years myself in uh, North America and absolutely loved it. Uh, but there's no place like the, the south of Australia and, and some of the stuff that we have on offer. offer. So uh, we'll head to the next slide, please. I might hand over to Simon, who has uh, been with Deakin for quite a few years and with the medical school pretty much since its inception. So uh, over to you. Thank you. Yes, so we'll be doing a bit of a tag team approach. But uh, as Scott said, we're a relatively young university. We're celebrating 40 years this year. Um, but the, the, the main things that Deakin is focused on is you know, providing an excellent teaching uh, situation for all our students and obviously having a, a focus on our students to make sure that they get a, not only a, a good level of education, but they have a good time while they're, they're here at the university. Uh, in terms of the, the university's reputation, um, the figures that you can see on the screen there are from last year, but uh, certainly they're still pretty much the case. So we came out first in a survey of student satisfaction for Victoria and third in Australia. So uh, obviously that student satisfaction is not just for the teaching, it's, it's also for the whole support, uh, lifestyle, all facilities. those sort of factors. Yeah, facilities as well. So we've got roughly 42,000 students, uh, a bit over 3,000 staff. We've got a fairly big contingent of international students, 8,000 there. Um, and certainly the focus for Deakin in, in general and, and for the medical school in particular is for rural and regional students. So we're trying to, uh, from the university point of view, is, is, is to produce uh, qualified people to go out and work in rural and regional areas and that's the main thrust of the medical school. Uh, and I think Canada's in the same boat. We are facing quite a severe shortage of of medical personnel in our rural and regional areas, so that is certainly a focus uh, for the school. And at the moment, 2% of our uh, student population is made up of Indigenous uh, Australians. Now, that's an area that we're concentrating on in the medical school, and we're hoping to uh, certainly increase our numbers of Indigenous students in, in, in the near future. That sounds really low too, 2% of Indigenous students, but uh, that's actually high by Australian standards. Yes. Yes. So, can we have the next slide, thanks. So the, the Deakin Medical School opened its doors to students in 2008. Um, and as Scott said, I've been here. I started the same day as the first lot of students. So I've, I've seen it from day one, which has been terrific. Um, as it says there, it's a graduate entry course. We do it over four years. It's a fairly condensed course, so it's, uh, it's pretty and Scott will go through some more details, but it's fairly intensive. As I said earlier, we do have that rural and regional focus. And again, the aim is to produce doctors who can walk out the door here and straight into a hospital situation, ready to work with all the relevant skills and not just procedural skills, but communication, all those other important skills as well. So the emphasis, as I said, procedural skills, we have a big issue with chronic disease in terms of things like diabetes, heart disease, whatever. So we're looking at prevention and management of those sort of conditions. And there's a big focus on interdisciplinary learning. So we do have some situations where uh, one of our placements is what we call uh, interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary placement. So you get to work with other health professions in that placement. So again, that's a focus. Can we go to the next slide? So we're the third uh, school, uh, medical school in Victoria. Um, there's some numbers there for domestic places which probably don't make a, uh, a big difference to you guys. The interesting thing to note, the thing to note there is that uh, for the past two years, uh, we have topped the nation uh, across all the medical schools in Australia for uh, preferences. So we are the most popular medical school in Australia um, and that it is due to the fact of we've got a new new facility, we've got lots of uh, support from the community, uh, the teaching, the, the program is, is all very new, very modern. Uh, we're producing very good quality doctors. So uh, 
that, that all adds up to why we're the number one choice in Australia. At the moment, we've got uh, 12 international places uh, for this year and next year. Um, as, as we said earlier, four-year graduate entry course. Uh, we've graduated three cohorts so far, the first lot in, in uh, 2011. Um, and I think Scott might have mentioned earlier, um, all our graduates have been able to get internships, uh, whether that be locally or in the case of our international graduates. Um, some of them have stayed and others have returned to their home country. They've all been uh, able to be placed. So that's a, a very good record. Um, recently, or well, last year, there was a number of uh, graduates from other medical schools did have trouble getting places, but uh, as I said, none of ours did. Yeah. One of the reasons we're number one in Australia, I think, in terms of applicants, is the fact that uh, all of our students today have received internships. And they're actually, because, because we're producing such work ready doctors, they're actually priority selections by the hospitals uh, yeah. around our neck of the woods. So we're, we're pretty happy with that, that we're producing high quality students that the hospitals are enjoying as well. Yeah. And you've got a picture there of our, our new uh, head of school, uh, Professor John Watson. Uh, next slide, thanks. Okay, so the program, I'll let Scott talk to that. He's the, uh, the resident expert there. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Simon. So basically we have a four-year program, although it's more like a three-and-a-half-year program with the, the last half of year four being what we call an elective placement. So uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit of time. The first, first years of one and two are on our Warm Ponds campus in our brand-new medical school. The emphasis there is like many uh, medical schools, it's an emphasis on biomedical knowledge. Uh, we have a, a, a mock hospital set up in our, uh, clinicals, in our clinical school here as well, uh, where you can learn procedural skills, so learn how to put in an IV, uh, take blood pressures, basic life support, all those sort of things. And, and you'll see the students walking around all gowned up ready for surgery, just there being no patients around. So we basically start with clinical skills from the word go first couple of weeks. Uh, the, the program then is broken up into biomedical knowledge, uh, public health and, and a few other bits and pieces. So years one and two are, are pretty full on, but pretty enjoyable. A lot of interactive learning. Deakin is actually a pioneer in Australia of online learning. So most of our uh, materials are, are recorded and you can uh, take them in in your own time and own, own place and they're highly interactive. We also have really good relationships between uh, the students and the academics here on board, the, the corridors are always open and, and we develop quite close relationships with a relatively small student cohort of 140 and quite a few academic staff. In terms of placements, in, in basically in your first six to eight weeks, you will be out on a placement with, a, with um, one of the local health services in some way. So you're actually, you're learning uh, how to interact with patients from the word go here at Deakin, which a lot of other schools wait until later in years three and four until they start that. So we're pretty happy, and I think that's uh, probably one of the reasons we produce such work ready doctors is that you interact with patients from the first year of medical school. Years three and four, you're no longer on campus, you're out actually in one of our clinical schools. We have four clinical schools uh, in, in southern Victoria. Uh, where you're interacting day in, day out with patients and clinicians and doing your learning online. Like I said, we've had, we have a very strong uh, online learning environment uh, at the Deakin Medical School. We can head to the next slide, please. So the, the program is really divided into four parts across the four years. We have, if we start at the right-hand side of this diagram, knowledge of health and illness. That's basically your biomedical sciences and physiology and anatomy, all those uh, really important subjects that you need to know but perhaps aren't as clinically relevant down the track. Doctor and patient makes up a large uh, component of particularly years three and four. This is where you learn to communicate with patients. You learn about uh, basic clinical skills. So like I've mentioned, inserting IVs and so on already, how to run a health check. Uh, and, and we do that in a highly interactive way. We have uh, electronic simulators and, and all sorts of things where you get to practice your patient engagement and patient management. Public health medicine is something that also sets us apart. We actually uh, look at the bigger picture of health and medicine uh, in the Deakin program as well. So public health medicine has a lot of uh, aspects. We talk about epidemiology and, uh, and all those sort of things in very broad terms, but also focus it down to a patient and have a, a population-centred uh, focus on treatment. 
We also uh, are pretty big in that space for cultural awareness, cultural sensitivity, uh, Indigenous health and a few other bits and pieces. And finally, which with the, the final uh, theme, which happens across all four years, is ethics, law and professional development, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's uh, ethical and lawful treatment of patients and, and uh, your own personal professional development as a doctor. So we have a, a pretty highly integrated program, and you'll hear from somebody in each of those themes in each week of each year at, at the next slide, please. So years one and two are, are pretty much summarised already uh, how we go about it. We, we teach in blocks, so in HME 101, which is semester one of year one, we teach human biology, infection, defence and repair, and then you have your final exams. HME 102, which is the second semester of your first year, cardiorespiratory and renal gastrointestinal, and HME 201, uh, first semester of year two, HME 202, second semester of year two. So we teach in blocks, which uh, gives the students a good integrated knowledge. They'll be learning about the epidemiology, the anatomy, and the physiology and biochemistry of each one of those systems uh, at each, each time point. So you become a very well-rounded student, I believe. We do a lot of small group uh, problem-based learning teaching and team-based learning, and that's where you really get to develop close relationships with the academics and your other classmates. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole body of literature out there that says the small group learning is the best way to go about it, so we, we've really embraced that as well. In terms of how much contact you'll have per week, it's generally about 20 contact hours between the problem-based learning and your know, face-to-face lectures or, or laboratories or whatever, whatever you may be doing. So about 20 hours per week isn't too much, but then we have about 20 hours where we recommend self-study. So five to 10 hours of that will be online learning, which will be directed by academic staff, and then you'll be required to do your five or 10 hour study yourself. Uh, just to keep up to speed with all the materials that's going to be. So medicine, as I'm sure you're aware, is a very busy degree. We, we tend to do it in a way that is well integrated and uh, it uses the most of, most of your time and gives you a chance for a break as well. Next slide, please. Uh, here's a couple of pictures which um, you can probably download a little bit later on from our medical school. You'll see the top one there is one of our mock boards here on campus. So you'll actually... Uh, take turns in being patients and interacting with those patients. On the right hand side you'll see our clinical skills laboratory with a, a, a really great um, electronic simulator person who vomits and does all sorts of crazy things while you're trying to put in uh, nasogastric tubes or whatever it may be. We have great teaching laboratories and teaching facilities. We also do in the field uh, learning as well. So like I mentioned you'll already get, you'll go out on your um, rota clinical rotations from first and second year. We also do an Indigenous version, which is uh, the two days in your, in your first six weeks at the university. We teach you about the Australian Indigenous culture and some of the unique health aspects that they, they face, and we actually do that out at uh, local uh, cultural sites. Next slide, please. So years three and four are, are when you head out to the clinical schools, and we'll show you where they are pretty soon. And, and here it becomes more of a traditional uh, doctor-student teaching relationship where you where you track doctors over time. The rotations that we have, you can see there, medicine, musculoskeletal, surgery, mental health. You, you may uh, be on one of those rotations at any time during years three and four. It just depends on, on what, which surgeon is available and which rotation you're on. Uh, and then in fourth year, you'll see HME 402, the second part of your fourth year. We have a pre-intern selection, which is an area of medicine that you particularly want to study. And we have an elective there at the end. So during that elective, uh, it's up to students where they, they want to go. So a lot of our students will go back to where, back to their hometown. So we have Queensland students or Western Australian students who may go back there and establish a relationship with the health service so that they have to get an internship there. Uh, alternatively, people will go and pursue an area of medicine that they're particularly passionate in. So we have people going to Scotland, the Pacific Islands, Papua New Guinea, you name it, and, and interacting in terms of other medical electives. And the school helps you set those up, but that's really a student-driven elective. For Canadian students who want to go back and practice in Canada, uh, we recommend that you use that elective time to go back to where you would like to practice, uh, do your elective in a Canadian hospital or with a Canadian family medical practice and, and establish your rapport there. Uh, we have a really good uh, inter-school learning, um, uh, teaching and learning model, so 
the, the academic staff here at the campus of Warm Pond will be travelling around all the clinical schools and supplementing your clinical knowledge that you get from the doctor, uh, doctors and patients on site. Next slide, please. Oh, here we go. We've got uh, our clinical schools all across Southern Victoria. So I don't think I can use my mouse to show you, but basically on the bottom right hand side, you'll have the Geelong Clinical School. That's our major one. And that's also where the campus is. Uh, we have about 50 students placed there every year and our 140 students per year here on campus. We're only about a one hour's drive away from Melbourne or Melbourne and are almost a suburb of Melbourne in a way. Um, and we're also much closer to the coast, which is fantastic. So we also have Warrnambool uh, Hospital, which is right down on the coast uh, to the left. And that has actually produced our last couple of duck students. So our, our highest graduates. Um, that's got a really good reputation of, of, of interesting patient presentations, a great clinical schools, a great clinical uh, lecturing team, uh, and a, it's a nice small cohort of students go down there. So we only send down about 20 students per year. Similar numbers go to Ballarat, which is out in the, the Grampians Hospital, out to the west of Melbourne, and Eastern Health, which is actually in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne itself. Something that's unique to Deakin in terms of medical schools in Australia is we have what's called the Immerse program. About 20 of our students each year go out and practice or do their clinic, their first year of the clinical uh, schools, so year three, in small regional communities. And this is particularly for students who are interested in pursuing the rural general practice or rural family medicine um, aspect for the rest of their careers. So they get great individual one-on-one -on -one teaching from a, a general practitioner. They get to get their hands on patients and, and do clinical uh, clinical cases themselves from an early period when they're year three, uh, obviously under the tutelage of, of the local general practitioner. Those students come in with absolutely fantastic practical skills and, um, and we interact with them using our online environment pretty effectively. Next slide, please. So the other thing that Deacon's really focusing on at the moment is we're, we're ramping up our research. So I, Myself, I research in the area of cancer, infectious diseases and rural health, and we're building all sorts of facilities at Deakin to do that sort of research at the moment. Just a, a few of them here, the medical school laboratories, they're actually laboratories on one whole floor of our school that produce all sorts of biomedical research, uh, a lot of cancer research happening there, and, and infectious diseases, like I mentioned. There's probably about 40 or 50 research staff and about, I think they have 100 higher degrees uh, research students. We also have a, a new building called the Regional uh, Community Health Hub or REACH building and they do all sorts of community-based research there. We have metabolic research units and a big biotech focus as well. So the research at Deakin's really cranking up here at the Warm Ponds campus in Geelong. Next slide. So Canadian entry requirements. Uh, I think we might hand back to you for this one, Simon, and I can help out as needed. Thank you. So what, what we're looking for is uh, a completed undergraduate degree that's recognised here in Australia. So generally most of the degrees that you'd be completing in Canada would, would fit that bill. Um, we're looking at a, a grade point average for out of a scale of seven, which is what the Australian standard is. is it's usually a five out of seven. I think the Canadian standard is, is usually out of four, so we're looking at somewhere around 2.8 or above um, out, of, out of the four. Uh, then we're looking at the, uh, the scores of, of eight, eight and eight for the, the MCAT, the Medical College Admissions Test. Well, some students actually do the, the Graduate Australian Medical Schools Admissions or the GAMSAT test. So if you do the GAMSAT, we're looking at a minimum score of 50 in each of the three sections. Uh, and a score of 50 overall. Um, so we're not really fussed as to which test that, uh, that applicants complete as long as they reach those minimum scores. We would then hold a, an interview. Uh, as Scott said, he's heading over in the near future and, and we would hold those interviews in Canada where we can. If, if uh, you can't uh, catch Scott when he's there, um, what we can do is we can set up a Scott interview either from your home or from your university or wherever, wherever. So again, we use similar questions to what we use for our domestic applicants, um, but we just use it in a, a panel situation. Um, and you know that, that will be a, a, a part of the whole process. So 
you need to perform well at the interview to, to still make it into the course. If, uh, if you haven't completed your uh, education uh, in English, uh, we would, would ask that you have a, an IELTS score of seven or above uh, in both the written and the spoken areas of that test. Uh, next slide, thanks. So I, I, sh I should go back a step and, and just say uh, your application should be lodged through Global Link. So obviously they will then pass all your details on to us. We've had a number of uh, Canadian graduates uh, and the, the, the bloke on screen there, Dr. David Meniz, uh, he was uh, one of our first international students and um, you've got some comments there, I won't read them out. but. He was one of the students, he did go to our Warrnambool Clinical School, uh, again absolutely loved it down there and he has since stayed on here in Australia and again was successful in getting an intern place uh, here in Australia, so uh, he's obviously doing quite well. Next slide, thanks. So maybe, do you want to do Yeah, I can, sure. So the career pathway, so David on the previous slide, he, um, he decided to stay on in Australia and, and we haven't had any international students who haven't who wanted a, a placement in Australia who haven't received one. So every single international student uh, graduating from Deakin has received it. If you are looking at, at heading uh, at staying on in Australia, you basically do your, your medical degree here, which is four to six years. You do your internship year, as I mentioned, we've always had somebody get an intern position in Australia, and that gives you your provisional provisional registration. You then become a, a postgraduate resident, which thankfully is where the, the financial stakes start rising for you. So an intern will be on about sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars a year. Postgraduate residents they start they start um, cranking up from there. After your postgraduate residence, which usually takes about two years, so three years postgraduate now, you can start your specialty training. Uh, basically, you're, you're specialising in an area, whether it's general practice, whether it's surgery, whether it's bioinformatics or whatever it may be. So there's a whole uh, a whole, special, a whole range of specialties from which you can choose which become evident when you're in your resident years. From there, your specialty training can take anywhere from, from sort of four to six years for a general practitioner up to ten years uh, if you want to be a neurosurgeon to specialise. Um, that should hopefully be pretty self-evident from that slide. Next one, please. If you are looking at, at returning to Canada, which we have had some, some students returning, you'll need to sit the evaluating exam uh, through the Medical Council of Canada or the MCAA. You can look that up online. Basically, it's uh, 108 multiple choice questions which test your background knowledge. Uh, you can also do that here in Australia before you return to, to Canada. Um, basically, it looks at all the things that we teach anyway, so child health, maternal health, adult health. You will have, after you're finishing your degree at Deakin, a really great uh, background in all of that. And, we, and our students particularly go well at the MCCCAA exam upon returning. Uh, our program actually aligns really closely with the content of that exam, so what our uh, graduates do really well. Basically, you get a pass or a fail uh, from that exam, and uh, like I mentioned, all of those are passed, and then you go into CARMS uh, to, to get your placement. So CARMS is on the next slide. Yeah, so CARMS you can you can have a bit of a look at if you're if you're wondering about the process uh, of getting uh, into a, a placement back in Canada. Of, of all the international graduates who graduate from an international school, be it in Australia or in the UK or in India or wherever it is you go to do your medical degree, eighty five percent of returning uh, students get one of their top three choices uh, in Canada. Australian universities do a little bit better than that, and Deakin University does well on that as well. So we're, we're usually you get one of your top three choices um, on returning to Canada. Also, we we highly recommend and support you in getting back uh, to Canada for your elective in your fourth year, which increases your chances of, of getting one of your top three choices. Uh, so that's some of it, something that other medical schools don't necessarily offer, and you're particularly likely to. to get one of your priority picks if you're interested in family medicine. So Deakin has a great uh, general practice family medicine background. We produce work ready doctors and, and they're highly sought after in Canada. So uh, if you want to know more information, you can check out the CARMS website, which has all sorts of information. Next slide, please. 
So I think we can talk probably a little bit now about the lifestyle of Deacon. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been in North America and, and, and it was great, um, but I had to return back here because it was even better. We have all sorts of research facilities around. We, we have in this medical school itself a relatively small student cohort. We've got great relationships. We have all sorts of administrative support. So Simon being the school executive officer leads a number of uh, administrative teams. One of them is the student experience team and their sole role is to make sure that students are enrolled appropriately, they have the right visas, they have some they have somewhere to live as soon as they arrive in Australia and so on. So should you uh, wish to apply to Deakin, that student experience team will be in, in frequent contact with you to make the transition as smooth as possible. We have accommodations here on campus and we actually have special accommodations for our medical students who are postgraduate, so they're called the medical pods. Uh, they're away from uh, the general undergraduate student uh, population as, as much as they can be. Uh, they're small living, three or four people per, per unit and you have your own cooking facilities and lounge facilities and all that. So that's a, a bit of a bonus of our medical school as well. We have also a, a group called Deakin International which help transition, uh, help transition you to Deakin and then back from Deakin if you wish to go back to Canada. And most importantly, a great lifestyle, which we can, uh, you can have a look uh, on our website to check out the lifestyle, or just Google in uh, the old ways, the Great Ocean Road or Geelong or Melbourne, and you'll look at it yourself. But if we could go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, we're, we're only a very, almost a suburb of Melbourne, which is the biggest city. A lot of our students actually live up there and commute down. We don't necessarily recommend that because you do have a lot of hours on campus and in the clinical setting as well. One of our clinical schools is up in Melbourne. Melbourne's actually, I think, one of the world's most livable cities just behind Vancouver. So if you think about Vancouver in the Southern Hemisphere, it's very similar. We've got a great cafe lifestyle, sports lifestyle, and um, the city is about three to four million people. So it's, it's quite a big city with all the things that big cities have if you're that way inclined. Next slide, please. Uh, so it looks like this is Geelong, it is. So Geelong is, um, a, basically it was a very big regional town which has now been almost absorbed into the suburbs of Melbourne. So Geelong is about 350,000 people depending on where you draw the borders. So relatively big, big town. Uh, we're very passionate about sport here in Geelong as well. So if you do come to Deakin, you'll have to barrack for the Geelong football team. Uh, just one of the prerequisites that we throw out there. We have all sorts of beaches. We're about 10 minutes away from the beaches and Geelong itself is actually on a bay as you can see from the photos. We have two hospitals in Geelong already. We have a, a big uh, a public hospital, which you can see on the bottom left hand side there. That's where the majority of our students get placed in third and fourth year, 50 students per year roughly. We also have a, a private hospital uh, in Geelong, which is just being redeveloped to include its own emergency facilities and intensive care units. And finally, which is a bit of a bonus for Deakin, we're actually getting a brand new hospital built on campus, which is in the upper right hand corner of that slide. Uh, that hospital will take somewhere between 30 and 40 uh, interns per year is my understanding. So it's quite a big hospital and we're really lucky to have it on campus. Next slide, please. Uh, luckily, Deakin is also very close to the country, so I know uh, Canadian people are a lot like Australian people and love their outdoors. So we have mountains nearby, so you can get off and do some hiking and rock climbing, all that sort of thing. We actually uh, have a, a temperate rainforest right out, out our back door here, uh, which is a great part of the world to go exploring through. Um, we have great small country towns in the upper right hand side there is Ballarat, which is a town I think of about 80,000, somewhere in that park, which we have one of our clinical schools at as well. Um, and not many people from the Northern Hemisphere I've spoken to previously understand that we do have snow in Australia. You can actually come here and come skiing as well. Ski fields are about two hours, two and a half hour drive away. My favourite one's about three and a half hours away, so you can still get out and get into some power. Next slide, please. Next one. Here we go. Um, so the thing that... Um, everyone down this neck of the woods absolutely loves is, is the coast. We're only, like I said, 10 to 15 minutes away from the coast. A lot of our students actually live in Torquay and Bells Beach uh, and, and get quite heavily involved in surfing and the surf lifestyle while, while completing their medical degree. Without doubt, the, this part of Australia that, that Deakin situates in has the Great Ocean Road, which is perhaps our, our most iconic um, coastal 
stretch. So it's absolutely fantastic for sightseeing, for bringing your relatives and friends down to do some exploring and, and for yourself. It's it's great to get out and get your head in, in the ocean every now and then to get away from the medical school. So we're, we're pretty lucky with where we're situated. Next slide, please. So that's uh, roughly where Simon and myself would, would like to wrap it up. Um, I guess to summarise, uh, we have a very limited number of international places, uh, only 12 places of which um, we're, we're hoping to fill all those with Canadian students if possible. So we actually do a priority interest there for Canadians. Uh, like Simon's mentioned, I'll be uh, over with, uh, in Canada pretty soon to conduct interviews or just to sit down and have a chat. So more than happy for you to email me. You can see my email at the bottom of the slide there and see when I'll be where. Or alternatively, you can contact through Global Leaks and I'll uh, be letting you know. Uh, yeah. Great. Well, thank so, you. Any uh, questions, I guess? Yeah, so we'll kind of move on to questions. And um, we kind of made mention of this a couple of times, but Scott will be in Canada uh, at the end of May, beginning of June. Uh, so for any students that are interested in meeting with Scott, um, he'll be available to meet you one-on-one. Um, -on -one. He'll also be holding some information sessions. Um, so when I follow up with everyone, I will make sure to send you the link to sign up for, um, for meeting with Scott. And then also, if you haven't yet applied, um, let us know and uh, we'll kind of look at your um, entry requirements and if you do meet the entry requirements, um, Scott will be happy to interview with you even if you haven't completed your application yet. Yeah, definitely. Great. Um, so now we'll kind of go on to our question and answer session. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, there is a question uh, box within your GoToWebinar uh, panel so you can just start writing in questions and um, Scott and Simon and um, I'll chime in when I need to um, will help answer your questions. Great. And then I'll read them aloud to you guys. Yeah, sure. Great. Okay. You a very good job of explaining things because there's no questions in <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Moses has asked, "Is this session um, only is this session only applicable to Canadians?" So I think Moses is actually in the U.S. So U.S. students are able to apply, correct? Certainly. Yep. Yeah. Um, the uh, we, we take applications from students all around the world. So as Scott said, we're trying to. Uh, give a bit of preference to people studying in Canada or North America in general and uh, certainly you know anyone's welcome to apply as long as they meet the, the criteria and obviously do well at an interview we're more than happy for them to to come into the course. Um, I'm not sure whether we mentioned what we will be doing is we'll be trying to make offers uh, fairly soon and so anyone who has an interview with Scott uh, when he's over there will be once he comes home, we'll, we'll have our selection committee meet mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be making decisions and we'll be trying to make offers by late, late June, early July mm -hmm. uh, so that we can, as we said, give that bit of preference to, uh, to students from North America. Um, from there, we'll be offering a second round to students that are in, in country here in Australia. So obviously, you know, if, if people are keen to get in, it's probably worth you know, making that application soon and then uh, certainly giving us a response as soon as possible. Yeah, I guess uh, one of the reasons that we really focus on North American students too is that, that Deakin uh, has its reputation of producing work ready doctors and some of the other uh, medical schools here in Australia take up to 100 international students. With our limit of 12, we really want to pick the cream of the crop, ones who are great at communicating and mm -hmm. ones who uh, will either want to practice in Australia or, or in so that's, that's part of our reputation, part of the reason why we focus on Right. And the entry requirements that you went through, um, they're also the same entry requirements for students applying from the U.S. as well. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. So we mentioned Canadian students, um, but this, is, this webinar is definitely applicable to U.S. students as well. Um, and now, Scott, if a student isn't able to come to an interview, will you be able to do a Skype interview with them? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we're pretty flexible and we, we know that uh, 
people over, over that neck of the woods are on holidays or working at the moment. So uh, if, if they can't, if they get their application in, uh, Global Links and myself will, will have a chat and we'll, we'll line up a Skype interview or we may even be heading over later in the year in September to, to hold a, a brief round of interviews if we're not full by then as well. Preferably a Skype interview uh, before July when we make our office. Great. Great. And I suppose for, for people who perhaps are applying after July, we can certainly do a Skype interview from, from here in Australia or as well any time up to that closing day or when we're full. Great. Now, when did you guys um, fill all of your spots last year? Uh, look, I, I can't remember the exact date, but um, I mean... There was about 80 odd applicants. Yeah, there was about 95 applicants all up, so the, the okay. competition is there. Um, and I, I suppose we, we topped up a few of them late in the piece when we had some late withdrawals, but the, the majority of spots were filled fairly early on in the piece. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, Moses would also like to know what the acceptance percentage is for U.S. students. It's prob probably more of an international, what the... Yeah, look, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't, I haven't got that, that uh, information. In general, I don't think we've had too many uh, U.S. citizens apply in the past. Um, and, and look, I'm not 100% on, on all the details, but there were some funding arrangements uh, that Moses may be aware of that uh, U.S. citizens couldn't get some sort of government funding until Deakin had graduated two cohorts of students. So we've now done that. Um, so that situation may have been resolved. Um, again, I'm, I'm not across those fine details about the funding, but we're certainly uh, eligible as far as that goes. Yeah. And, and this is more than welcome to email me with those mm. specific questions and I can pass them on to the International Student Experience Team mm -hmm. here as well. Great. Yeah, and as far as the funding goes, um, students are just not able to use um, USAID through FAFSA. Um, so the university has to go through a pretty um, strenuous process of getting approved for FAFSA. Um, but students are eligible to use Sally Mae loans and any private loans as well. And then Canadian students are eligible to use their provincial aid and then they can also take out uh, professional aid as well. So, yeah, the other thing we're mentioning there, I suppose, from the finance point of view is that we'll be looking into um, instituting some scholarships for 2015. Oh, great. So hopefully um, we're, we're, we're just looking at that at the moment, but we'll be looking at that in terms of uh, it may be uh, something that goes straight off their accommodation fee, uh, it may be coming straight off their uh, tuition fee, uh, but as I said, we're hopeful that we'll have some scholarships that will be available to all international students um, that, that may help offset some of those costs. Great. Okay, any other questions? Uh, mm, so Moses asked if you could use the GI Bill. Moses, I'll have to, we'll have to look into that one. Um, we'll have to first see if Deacon is approved um, by the VA to receive the GI Bill, so we'll look at that first. Um, so if you wouldn't mind emailing me um, a separate email, then I, we can look into that for you. So um, sounds, it sounds like Moses, yep, no worries Moses. Um, so he's, uh, he's either a vet or is um, one of his parents is a vet. So he's asking if he can use the uh, post 9-11 um, GI Bill. Great, oh, active duty. Cool. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, I think that's all I had to go over. Do you guys have any last minute thoughts? Oh, I think we're, we're pretty done. Just hopefully we'll, we'll see some of you uh, on my travels. Mm -hmm. And certainly don't hesitate to contact the school or Scott or whoever and we'll provide as much information and, and assistance as we can. Great. And then I will just send an email out to everyone and follow up, provide you the application so you can begin the process of applying and hopefully meet up with uh, Scott in a couple of weeks. Sounds great. Great.
Thank you guys both very much. This is very helpful, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye.